Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm doing a new drugstore makeup tag. This tag was created by Jen Phelps here on YouTube. I will have her video and her channel linked in the description box and the first pinned comment down below. So it seems like this is like a revamp or an update to an older existing drugstore tag. And A, I haven't done a makeup tag in a bit. It feels like a hot minute. And B, I feel like I haven't been giving as much love to drugstore makeup recently. And I wanna kind of shift the focus because I, I definitely do like splurging. I do like every now and then getting something that's luxury or higher end. But really my love and the reason I came into the beauty space like in the very first place was my love of affordable makeup. And at the very beginning, my need for affordable makeup because I couldn't afford really anything else. When I first got into makeup, I used to obsess over drugstore makeup starter kit videos because that was like the stuff I could actually afford. And that's why I'm a huge fan of Shot Miss A because like if I had access to something like Shot Miss A where there was great makeup for a dollar back when I first started my makeup journey, I would have been ecstatic. I would have been so excited. So I really just want to show more love to affordable makeup and talk all about the goodness of great drugstore makeup. We have 14 questions to get through, so let's go ahead and get started. So question number one is, if you could only use one drugstore or affordable brand, what would it be? And I have to, I'm gonna to have to go ahead and say Shop Miss A and their AOA Studio House line. I recently just did a full face with Shop Miss A. If you missed that video, I'll throw it up in the cards. But that really showed me like the wide range of products Shop Miss A has. And to be quite honest, the only absolute dud I found so far from Shop Miss A has been most of their eyeshadows. I don't think they finally like found a, a good eyeshadow formula yet. I did just get two newer palettes in PR, so I haven't thoroughly tested those out. I don't know if they updated their formula or not, but I know their first three big palettes that I tested out those are duds. Um, so quite honestly, if I could only use one makeup or, or one affordable brand, it would be the Shop Miss A because they have great foundations, powders, pressed and loose, highlighters, blushes. They really just have like almost everything. <laughs> Question number two is what's the most underrated drugstore affordable brand? And I'm going to go ahead and say also Shop Miss A. I first heard about Shop Miss A back when like Sophia Nygaard and people were just like dollar makeup, whoa, and they were just doing it for like clickbait like oh does this makeup even work and like they did one video with it and like never touched the products again so I feel like now with TikTok it's definitely gotten a lot more attention because they, they did blow up on TikTok I saw that but on YouTube I feel like they're still fairly underrated which is why I keep singing their praises they're a great brand they're actually the only brand I have an affiliate link with because I just love their products so much and I believe in what they do and how they do it <laughs> But um, I'm glad to see that they're getting more recognition on TikTok and on other social medias. And I would just like to see them get as much love as they deserve also here on YouTube. Question number three is, what's the most overrated drugstore affordable brand? And I, I gotta say Pixie. I, a couple of weeks ago or a month at this point, <laughs> did a full like Pixie review. Over the course of the last like six months to a year, I was slowly buying Pixie products. And I say slowly buying because they're so expensive. <laughs> they are so pricey. And to be honest, they're, they're overpriced they're overhyped I hated their eyeshadow formula it just was so patchy and not great and there were a couple of hidden gems in there but to be quite like frankly honest for drugstore makeup overpriced way too overpriced I even the products that I really really like and I think of rebuying I just think oh I've got better affordable options I can reach for instead so I really don't know if I rebuy the products I liked from Pixie that much just because they're so expensive and they're really overhyped and I say they're overhyped specifically on YouTube because they did do a lot of collabs and I think they do they send out a lot of PR so I do see they're constantly sending out PR to smaller influencers bigger influencers and they're doing collabs with um, influencers as well but I have to say I've not seen a review <laughs> I don't know if I just haven't been looking hard enough but I barely see anyone using products from Pixie unless they were sent them in PR and so that's why I really wanted to do my video. I went out and I bought the products and I didn't think they were worth it. Question number four is, what is your favorite drugstore product for under $5? And I, I went through so many products. I was like, okay, which one is it? And I, I had to pick this one. And it's the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. This, depending on where you buy it, between $3.99 and $4.99. And it's literally just like the best mascara. And it's not just good for an affordable mascara. It's a great mascara. <laughs> I'm currently testing out a like higher end mascara. I've got like the milk makeup mascara and honestly it's not that great. I really like the essence better and I see that a lot with like some more mid to higher end mascaras um, but for just such a great affordable mascara this is amazing. I love this and so that I had to pick this as my favorite for under five dollars. 
Question number five is, what is a hidden gem from the drugstore that no one talks about? So for this one, I had to go with a product I recently pulled back out of my collection to use, but it's been a favorite of mine for, I wouldn't say at least a year, if not a little bit longer. And that's specifically the contour and bronzing powders from Profusion. So from Profusion, they have this trio right up here. And this is so similar to the Smashbox contour trio. I'll throw a picture up here. I had this contour trio. I panned this contour trio. These powders are so similar to the Smashbox, it's uncanny. And this, I got this whole palette at Marshalls for $6.99. Yeah, so much better. <laughs> price wise, but they're just really good. I actually have a whole nother palette with these shades, the same shades in there. And I've hit pan on those shades. Um, I just pulled this palette out because I don't have pan in it and I haven't been using it as much. So I wanted to get more use out of this palette, but the same shades I have hit pan in, in another palette. It's just, they're really good. They blend out really nicely. I'm wearing them today for my skin tone. This is a perfect bronzer and a perfect contour shade. And I believe in their original contour palettes they do come in two different shades so they have a le they have a light and they have like a medium dark version but they're just so nice and i've really like i don't think i've ever seen anyone talk about specifically like their face contours bronzers i know people talk about the blushes people talk about the highlights people talk about their eyeshadow palettes but i don't think i've ever any seen anyone talk about like their bronzers and contours and they're just so good and specifically just as a dupe for those smashbox ones amazing Question number six is, what is your favorite drugstore foundation? Now, <laughs> I went through my collection and I pulled out three. And not just the ones that I have with me. I know you're supposed to pick one, but I'm cheating here because I love affordable foundations. I just do. So the first one is actually one I don't have in my collection, but I am going to pick up, especially as we get into the summer. That's the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. This is one of the best, like, bulletproof summer foundations ever. It looks amazing. It's full coverage. And I've worn this foundation through a full long work day. Now, if you knew my channel or you knew me before COVID hit, I uh, live right outside of New York City. So in order for me to get to work, I used to walk a mile to a train station, take two trains and then walk another half a mile or so, work in an office a full day and then do the whole thing back. So foundations I wore back then had to be bulletproof, especially in the summer because I just sweat, just so much sweat. And this was one of my bulletproof foundations and I, I just go back to it almost almost every summer. It's amazing. So I'm definitely gonna be picking this one up again. And it is one of my favorites. I just don't have the bottle with me right now. <laughs> Next, this is a new favorite of mine. This is the Elf Camo CC Cream. This is such a good, like full coverage, comfy, just great CC cream from the drugstore. And I have to say, I didn't really have a whole lot of like great luck with e.l.f. base products like foundations or concealers until super recently. This I really ended up liking and then their hydrating camo concealer because I tried their regular camo concealer and it was just dry, so dry. And my under eyes are already dry. I don't need more. <laughs> I don't need the, it's already the Sahara underneath here. Okay. But their, their hydrating camo concealer is so good. And I'm wearing it as an eye primer today and as an eye, as a concealer under my eyes today. It's so good. I love it. And so I feel like they're definitely stepping up their game when it comes to base products. And this, this just came out of left field for me. It's so good. I will say though, their shades are a bit meh. Um, they need to A, I think extend their shade range a little bit. And then B, um, Unfortunately, not all stores have all the shades, so I bought a different shade thinking it was the lightest shade that they had in store, but then I had to go and buy another shade. I um, mean, the prices vary greatly from store to store. Like, there was one store I bought it at where it was like $14, and then I bought it at another store and it was like $18, which is, uh, that's steep. <laughs> that is steep. Um, so just be mindful of where you're buying it from. All right, and last but not least, a favorite from Shop Miss A. This is the AOA Studio A Plus Buildable Satin Foundation. This comes in a small container. It's only 0.6 fluid ounces. If anything, I would I wish I could buy this in bulk, like a big bottle version of it, because it's so fantastic. This is a thin, liquidy con like texture, but it is full coverage, <laughs> full coverage, comfortable. It's just, it's so great. And this is this 0.6 ounces is only a dollar. Question number seven is, what products do you tend to buy more at the drugstore versus higher end? Now, I've, I feel like in my collection, I have a really good mix of drugstore and high end in just about every section of my collection, except for pressed powders. I do like getting some higher end loose powders, Givenchy and Laura Mercier and Tatcha, but when it comes to pressed powder, I'm a bit uh, cheap. <laughs> I just, I have some great affordable favorites that I, I just stick with and they work fantastic. And I do powder my face every day. I do like to set my foundation. So it's something I go through really quickly and I just like having the f affordable options there. Um, I love the AOA Studio Perfect Pressed Powder. I love the Rimmel Stay Matte. I actually just 
this kind of fell apart so I'm going to repress it but I love this one. I also just picked up another one that I really like. This is the Essence All About Matte Setting Powder and these are all under five dollars. Especially the the Rimmel. I noticed this goes on sale at CVS a lot. You can get it for like a dollar. That AOA one is a dollar and I just picked this one up at a Walgreens for like two dollars. Just for something I use every day that doesn't like I think for something that I use so often enough in my collection that I don't really see the need to get a higher end version of it. But then again, I did kind of think the same way about loose powder and I did fall in love with a couple of higher end loose powders. But I also have tried some higher end regular face powders. Like I tried the Hourglass one, a couple other ones, and I just didn't think they were like really that worth it. So I stick with my nice drugstore setting powders. Question number eight is what drugstore brand do you think is overpriced? So I already talked about Pixie. I think Pixie is way too overpriced, but I think Pixie is overpriced and overhyped. A brand that I don't think is overhyped but is overpriced is Physicians Formula. There are quite a few products from that brand that I really love, like their butter bronzer. I have their whole butter box of every butter product they've come out with. They're really good. I like the blushes. I like the bronzers, but they're just so expensive. They're, they, they're needlessly expensive at the drugstore, right? Like their butter bronzer can get up to like, it's like what, $15, $18? It does not need to be that much money. Especially with the bulky packaging, just cut down the packaging, make it cheaper. They also have a bunch of other products like mascara and some of their foundations that are just way too expensive to be at the drugstore. Like I feel like it has the same problem as Pixie where it doesn't really know where as a brand they want to sit. Like do they want to be drugstore or do they want to be like mid higher higher end? Because you need to make a choice. You can't just be like NYX or Pixie and just have these crazy expensive price points because eventually people are just going to find better affordable options and not buy from your brand as much. It's just how it is capitalism. But let me know what you think if you think Physicians Formula is as overpriced as I think it is. Question number nine is what is your favorite drugstore dupe? I love a good dupe. So I have two here. The first is the Wet n Wild Makeup Locker CC Cream. This I found was a dupe for a Chantecaille BB slash CC cream that I used to love a couple years ago. And I have not bought that Chantecaille one ever since I found this Wet n Wild one. And I think this one is like the fourth Wet n Wild one that I've gone through because it's so great. I actually did a whole video about that dupe comparing like literally a side by side comparison. I'll throw it up in the cards if you missed it because it's a couple years old at this point, but it still stands. It's still a great dupe and I still to this day buy this whenever I can or whenever I run out. My next favorite dupe was for the Tatcha Silk Canvas. Remember when this took over YouTube and I fell in love with it. I splurged and bought it and fell in love with it and hated myself for falling in love with it until I found this great dupe and everyone else found this great dupe. It's the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. It's such a great primer and it literally is just like a great dupe for the Tatcha. And also for this one, I did do a side-by-side -side comparison of the e.l.f. versus the Tatcha. I'll throw that video up in the cards and I was shocked by how much better I liked the e.l.f than the Tatcha. It's just so good. And that, this, like the price points are just so crazy different on these. It's just an amazing dupe find. Question number 10 is, what is the best drugstore eyeshadow formula? Now I went through my collection and something that I went, I went with a brand that was like the best consistently, you know, like there are some brands where like they're very hit or miss when it comes to their eyeshadows. So I was looking for one that was like the most consistent. And for me, the most consistent and best affordable is Wet n Wild. They do have some duds, don't get me wrong, especially in their limited edition sets. Um, I don't think either of these are limited. Oh, this one's limited edition. So this is the Boo Crew. This is from a Halloween collection. A lot of the palettes from the Halloween collection were kind of meh. But consistently, especially with the products in their um, permanent line, fantastic formula. Especially for um, the amount of product you're getting and for the price. So these palettes retail for right around $4.99. And you get a lot of product in here. And they're creamy. They're blendable. They're pigmented. They're just so fantastic and these are just such a great option for those who either literally can't afford any other like any more than five dollars for eyeshadow but still wants to get some great looks or if you just don't want to spend that much money on eyeshadow these are fantastic i know a while ago they came out with palettes like this that were like dupes for popular palettes back then they came out with a dupe for an abh i think it was a soft glam palette they came out with this one which was kind of a dupe for the natasha denona tropic palette um, and those were fantastic these are actually brand new. I don't know if they changed the formula. From what I can tell, they have not, but they did change the packaging. Um, so they kind of changed from like this black 
kind of packaging to this new white. I do like the new packaging. This looks very nice. It looks, it actually looks like a little fancier in this packaging. Um, but I have to say, most consistent, uh, best quality of really affordable, readily available in the drugstore eyeshadows is from Wet n Wild. Question number 11 is, what is the worst drugstore eyeshadow formula? And I'm just going to go ahead and say it again, Pixie. I hated a for how expensive it was and b just for how trash the eyeshadows were especially because i mean they're a they're expensive b they're i think their most like well-known products are eyeshadow palettes and they they get pushed and pushed by influencers and people who get them in pr and then for me to buy all these palettes and try them and like they're they're trash they're trash <laughs> like i don't know either the, the quality of what is sent out in pr is completely different from what is actually sold, which is possible. We have seen that before. Or they're just being really nice in the brand because they get it for free. It's either way, it's very possible. But I thought the eyeshadow formula was trash and I would recommend you stay far, far away from pixie eyeshadows. Question number 12 is a drugstore brand you used to love, but you aren't crazy about anymore. That has to be ColourPop. ColourPop used to be like this amazing, like affordable brand where you could get like really good single shadows, really good palettes. Um, and like just really good affordable products, but like they weren't churning out new things every week. Like they just, they had a small collection of products, but they were good products, you know? Once they blew up and they were coming out with new products literally every week, not no exaggeration at all. They literally come out with products every week. Th their quality just took a nosedive. Like I, I could tell just from the palettes that I had back in the day, like the Good Sport, this is such a good eyeshadow palette. You will pry this palette from my cold dead fingers. This is such a good palette. I love it, love the color story, love the quality. Compared, comparing this to like the new Sailor Moon palette that I got, which I believe was the last thing I ever bought from ColourPop, there's a noticeable difference in quality, just right there. And it's, it's, it just, mathematically <laughs> with the amount of releases they're churning out there's no way the quality is going to be the same as it was back when they only had like 50 products you know total i also hate that even though they're churning out new products constantly they they no longer have a constant catalog of products i can't recommend products anymore because i have no idea if they're still available because what they do is they're the fast fashion of makeup they turn out a product it stays for three weeks it goes out forever and then no one else can get their hands on it and like what to me like what the hell is the point of that <laughs> like literally your entire goal for your company is to turn out things get people like oh get people like to go they're running on off of fomo right now that's in, that's entirely it they're not running off a of good quality they're not running off of affordability they're not really running off a of brand recognition that much anymore they're just running off of fomo and they're hoping that if they make things that are nostalgic enough that uh make you excited when you see them just enough to buy the product then they'll get a big rush of people buy the product and then they can just get rid of it forgot it ever happened and then do the same thing on the next release and that's not sustainable let's go ahead and say that right now just like regular fast fashion this is not sustainable and i it's just sad to see a brand like that fail so hard and i think that's why um i love shop misse so much shop misse is what color pop like could have been you know, and I think that's why I lean more towards Shop Missé because they do have a consistent catalog of products. Um, their AOA line, they don't come out with new products every week. I think their website comes out with new products every week, but that's not their house brand. Like they bring on more products every week from other brands onto their website. But all the Shop Missé is not their AOA studio line. AOA is just a part of it. Um, so they come out with new products. I never feel overwhelmed with new products from Shop Missé, but I do for with ColourPop, and I've had it up to here with ColourPop. I just, it's a shame to see how far they've come since, like, say what, 2015? Shame. Question number 13 is, drugstore product you didn't expect to like but totally wowed you. Now, I, I talked a lot of trash about Pixie, which is why this one surprised me so much, but the, the Pixie Beauty Balm. I talked about that before. I was expecting, like, next to nothing about that, but that foundation was just, it, even my complexion it was so comfortable it wore beautifully on my skin but it's expensive so i have to say it did blow me out of the water i was not expecting that at all but again i don't know if i'm gonna buy that again because it's so expensive and i found other more affordable bb and cc creams that are just as good so i mean it really for the purpose of this question it really did wow me because i was not expecting that from pixie and it's time for our last question. Question number 14 is your favorite affordable eyeshadow palettes right now. And I said palettes because I, I picked two. <laughs> uh, number one, I mentioned before, I just love the Good Sport palette. I just brought this back out. It's definitely a fall palette, but this is one of my favorite affordable palettes. And I think if I were to go through and
and pick one affordable eyeshadow palette, it would be this one. Unfortunately, it was limited edition, so you can't get it anymore, but I love this palette so much. And I know there's a lot of people out there that were able to get their hands on this palette. And I just, oh my God. If I could have, I could, I don't think I could have made a better dream palette than this one. It's just so nice. I love it. My other favorite affordable eyeshadow palette right now, just quality and also theme, is the Elf and Chipotle collab. This, wow, I just, I love how this came out. It's such a cute idea for a collab. It's really well executed and the quality is there. It's really good quality. So yeah, so right now my favorite affordable eyeshadow palettes are Elf and Chipotle and ColourPop Good Sport. Whew. Wow, I feel like I've been talking forever, but that is the last of the drugstore makeup tag questions. Thank you so much, Jen, for creating this great tag. If you are watching this and you have a YouTube channel, I would love to see you do this tag. Let me know on Instagram. Here's my Instagram or down below if you do this tag, because I would love to see you do it as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.